Hi everybody, I'm Andy. I'm an environmental educator with the Lower Columbia Estuary Partnership in Portland, Oregon. And I'm Katie. I'm a science educator too, and I help teachers and students raise salmon in their schools and learn all about these amazing fish throughout the school year. We're really excited you're here because today we're doing something special, a fish dissection. Katie and I teach fish dissection in the classroom, but today we're teaming up to explore the anatomy of a trout at the fish hatchery where Katie works, Columbia Springs in Vancouver, Washington. That's right, we're dissecting rainbow trout. Trout and salmon are very closely related. They're kind of like cousins, and they're both part of the same family called Salmonidae, which is a really fun word to say. You should try it out. Salmonidae. You sound so smart. So Andy, I have a question. Why do we do dissections? That's a great question. Doing a fish dissection is a great way to learn about fish and see them up close. It's also a cool way to learn about anatomy and organ systems. So we're gonna take a look first at the outside of the fish, the external part of the fish, and then we're gonna go inside and look at three different organ systems in the internal anatomy, the inside of the fish. It's also really cool to compare our bodies to a fish's body. Fish have organs and humans have organs, and some of those organ systems are the same. As we do the fish dissection and you're watching at home, think about this. What organ systems do you have in common with a fish and what's different? I can think of something I have in common with a fish already. Get it? Because fish have eyes and so do people. Anyway, one thing I wanna mention is that when we do dissections, we treat the fish with the respect that all living things deserve. Doing a dissection is similar in a lot of ways to when you catch a fish with your family. You or someone has to clean the fish, which means removing all the internal organs. And when you catch a fish to eat it, you're interested in the muscle or the meat of the fish, and you might toss all the internal organs aside. But when we do dissections, we're working as scientists. We take our time, we look closely, and we make observations about those internal organs and how they work together inside of the fish's body. So that's what anatomy is all about learning about the different body parts and their job in the body. If you wanna sound smart, you can use two scientist words, structure and function. Structure is another way to say body part and function is another way to say its job in the body. Okay, I'm getting excited to get started. Before we do, remember, this is a 360 video. That means you can drag across the screen with your mouse and look in all directions. In a few seconds, our faces are gonna go away and you'll be transported outside. So make sure to look around and follow what we're doing during the fish dissection with your mouse. Ready? Let's get started. So maybe we could start with some external or some of the outside structures. Sure. Cool, that sounds good. I don't know, when I look at a fish, the first thing I notice is the fins. Um, so I, I see there's a whole bunch of fins here. I recognize this one in the front. What it, what's this one called again? That one? Uh, that one's the pectoral fin. Okay. We've got two pectoral fins. Two pectoral fins. And then this is like the shark fin. What's this one called? That one's the dorsal fin. Okay. Dorsal fin on top. And then we've got... These, get, these are the pelvic fins, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like... They don't have legs attached to... Like, we have a pelvis, pelvic bone. But these guys, instead of having legs, they have fins. Mm -hmm. And then this looks like... I don't know, I'd call this the tail fin. Is there another name for that? There is another name. Some people call this the caudal fin. Okay. Yes. It's kind of like the propeller. Mm -hmm. And then this must be the anal fin, I guess, because yep. it's kind of back here by the vent. Mm -hmm. But then what's this little, there's this little stumpy guy. What's, yeah, what's up with that one? This one's really neat. This one mm -hmm. is the adipose fin. And some people call this one the hatchery fin, too. Okay. So I've got a question for you. Um, we just looked at all of these different fins, but... Andy, do you think that these fins have bones inside of them? Oh man, that is a great question. I don't know. I'm going to guess maybe? <laughs> <laughs> they feel a little hard. There's definitely some rigid structure in there, but it doesn't quite feel... I mean, I feel like it's kind of see-through, so maybe no bones? Mm. I don't know what's in there. They're kind of flimsy, huh? Okay. Yeah. But they're also kind of hard, mm -hmm. so do you feel like you can bend them a little bit? They definitely wiggle. Yeah, they wiggle and bend a little bit, but they don't really... They're definitely stiff, too. They don't mm -hmm. want to bend too far. Yeah. And did you get a chance to feel all of the fins? Uh Let's see. These guys all seem pretty similar. 
But this this feels weird. This feels like more fleshy. I feel like it feels like the rest of the fish feels. Yeah. So all of these fins do have bones inside of them. Mm -hmm. They're these rays. Oh, so okay. you can see through the um, flesh or the skin of the fish, oh, but you can feel okay. those bones in between. And if you've eaten fish and gotten a bone in your mouth, yeah. you know they're pretty thin, yeah. pretty small and pretty flexible, okay. except for this fin. Mm -hmm. This one is called the adipose fin and adipose is a type of fat. So oh. this, and it has adipose in different parts of its body too. It actually okay. has some adipose fat right up here in its snout. Oh, wow. Um, but this one gets cut off at the hatchery okay. and they call it marking. Um, and so then we'll know if a fish was born in a hatchery or not. And that can let a fisherman know if they're allowed to keep the fish or if they need to throw it back. Okay. So this has no bones inside. It's just a piece of fat up here. Okay, cool. That's really interesting. Wow. Well, what else, what else do you notice about here? Is there, do you have a favorite part of the fish that we haven't talked about yet? Uh, yeah, so I am wondering which part of the fish's body it will use to breathe. Oh, ah, I feel like I know this one. <laughs> fish, <laughs> I mean, like in humans, when I think about human organs, I know we, we have lungs inside mm -hmm. of us. So we breathe in the air, but I know in fish, because they're in the water, that they just, they just let it go into their mouth, but it comes out by the gills, right? Fish mm -hmm. have gills. Mm -hmm. So I guess, where is the in. gills? You're and saying- And if you're moving the mouth, you can okay. see- Oh yeah, this is starting to wiggle mm -hmm. right here. Look at that. But that that's not a gill right there, right? That this is not a gill, yeah. Hard. This one is the gill cover or the operculum. So you could lift that oh, up. Actually, okay. before you do yeah. that, yeah. we're gonna look at the gills underneath. Okay. And what color do you think the gills are gonna be? I think they're going to be red. And I always say that because I know in humans in the lungs, like the whole purpose of the lungs is to get like oxygen in the body, let out carbon dioxide. But I know that that oxygen gets to all the parts of your body by traveling in your blood. So mm -hmm. my guess is that if this is trying to get oxygen in the body, there's going to have to be a lot of blood close to the surface to allow the, the oxygen from the water to get into the blood. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, I'll say red. Okay. Let's lift it up and take a look. So we're lifting up that operculum. What does that operculum feel like? That's hard. That's really hard. That okay. feels kind of bony. Yeah, kind of bony. Of and then we've got these gill arches oh. in here. Maybe mm -hmm. we can grab from our tool bin yes. some tweezers. So we've got these gill arches here. I do see some of some blood here that's yeah. come out, and I see this pink, reddish fleshy part of the yeah. gill arches. It's like a little fan or something. Yeah, it does look yeah. like a fan. And I can actually, um, one thing that I've had to do to identify different types of fish mm -hmm. is to count how many gill arches that fish has. Okay. So this so one, let's count these. One so arch. One, two, three. Oh man, there's a lot. I did not realize that. Four. So that can wow. narrow down um, the type of fish that we have too. Okay. And uh, maybe we should take one of these gills out and look at it under the microscope. Sure, that okay. would be awesome. We need some. Let's grab our scissors. scissors. Do you like to? Sure, I can do a little snip action there. Oh, definitely. There's definitely like a hard part there. The, the structure of the gills. There yeah. seems to be a hard centerpiece. So we'll take a petri dish here. Cool. And there's a close-up view of our gill arch. And we do see this kind of squishy pink part and this hard bony arch. So we do see red, but we also see okay. white, the white bone. Okay. And then the gill has kind of these little teeth on it. You can see those little teeth coming up. Oh my gosh. And so we'll call those the gill rakers. Rakers, okay. And any guess what those, what the function of those gill rakers might be? They rake leaves out of the gills they in might. the fall. They <laughs> might actually. So okay. when the fish is breathing in water, taking in water, it might also take in some debris. And okay. so these gill rakers are actually keeping some of the debris from clogging up and damaging its gills. Oh, wow. So they're like little protectors yeah. to keep the gills from getting hurt. Yeah. Neat. Oh, that's Can awesome. Look under the microscope? Yeah, let's check that out. All right. So I'm going to put this under this little microscope here and 
And if you're watching on the video, if you scroll over to look where I am, I'm gonna have a little screen here so you can see what I'm seeing on this video. Turn it on here, Let's see if that works. So here's the gill. All these little bubbles aren't actually part of the gill. They're just there because we did the dissection. Look at all that pink where the blood comes close to the surface to get the oxygen. And here's the gill rakers. These are those little spines that help keep debris out of the gills to keep them clean and healthy. All right, so when I look at the external anatomy of a fish, um, I notice right away a couple of things. One, how slimy it is. This one, the slime has started to dry a little bit, wow. but it can use the slime to protect its body okay. so that it doesn't get um, bacteria or some parasites in it. Nice. So, um, and I also notice uh, all of these beautiful scales. Yeah, and so this is really wild. Maybe we can um, take a closer look at uh, one of these scales. Okay. And let's see. I think of the scales as kind of like a coat of armor. Yeah. And kind of like shingles overlapping on a roof. And they're made out of the same material as your fingernails. Oh, interesting. So, I have scales on my fingers? Yes. Is that what you're trying so, to tell me? <laughs> so if you hold up your finger yeah. like this and then yeah. tap on it. Uh-huh. And then imagine that your whole body was covered in fingernails. Oh, that's awesome. And that's what it would be like to be covered in scales. Wow. And have you ever seen a salmon or steelhead jumping up a waterfall? Yeah, I've seen pictures. Uh -huh. of that, yeah. And uh, so I've, I've gotten to see them and you can actually hear them hitting on the side of the rock. Oh, and wow. imagine if they didn't have any protection on those sharp rocks. So it really helps to make sure they don't get injured as they're traveling around. That's awesome. Oh yeah, let's take a look at one of those. Okay, so part of one of my jobs was to remove scales from salmon and put them in a little envelope and send them to uh, some scientists who would look at them under microscopes um, because it turns out we can learn a lot about the fish just by looking at their scales. That's awesome. Sick. Oh, it's so small. Let's see. Each little scale. But I mean, there must be, there must be like thousands of scales on this guy. It sure looks like it. Super cool. All right, let's see if we can find it under the video. So if we come back over to our, our little video setup here, let's see what we can do. And here's the scale under the microscope. Look at that. Most of it is actually clear. There's just that one little edge with color. Pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah. this is actually a, a photocopy of a scale that we enlarged. So it was just a little teeny tiny scale, the same size as this one. Okay. And see that color part, the part that we saw that had the dots yeah. on the top? Yeah. That's the part. <laughs> that's the part that we can see okay. um, on the fish right here, and the rest of it is embedded in the fish's skin. It's oh, embedded wow. in the fish's body. Okay. So this part is a part that would have color and has gotten worn a little bit by uh, being in the water and swimming around. Okay. And this part, it kind of reminds me of growth rings on a tree stem. Oh. And um, some of you may have counted the rings on a tree stem to tell how old the tree is. Right. right. Or how old it was when it got cut down. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with fish scales. Oh, so wow. that's why I was uh, sending these off to a scientist in a lab and they would count how many growth bands. So there's rings on this photo that are kind of close together and it looks a little bit darker right here. Mm -hmm. And then it looks a little bit darker right here. And that's the winter. That's when they um, didn't have a lot of energy in, in the ocean or in the lake. And um, so we can count how many of those bands there are and then we can age the fish wow that's and we can awesome. also know if it was in the river if it's a salmon or if it was in the ocean at that time oh that's awesome so the scales can actually tell you a lot of story yeah so they have an armor and a library of information on their skin <laughs> and fingernails yeah yeah oh that's super cool